Ah, welcome to Smartacular. Ah, I music it up. Way to go. I know. I try to surprise you. I, you know, we've been together a little I'm while. I appreciate that. We've been yeah. together a little while now, and I know it's probably starting to seem kind of, you know, the same. Routine. R- little routine. We might be in a rut. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to spice it up. So there you go. That was Wow. Your... Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome. It was amazing. You guys, here we are. Me, Jez, and that guy over there, Mass Hobo. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how are you? See, every time. He's always so Every chipper. And he's always so chipper and happy. How are you doing, a mass tobo? Uh, doing all right. Just sitting here in the. I don't know what temperature it is outside today, but it's been. I didn't have to go to work Thursday and Friday, so. Oh my God! Are you having the crazy uh, ice storm or whatever it is? The snow. Not again. Uh, it didn't. It didn't even stick on the ground. But I got two days off work, so I don't give a shit. Yeah. There you go. Well, you're in Texas. They don't expect you to yeah. have things like we shut moisture this that down. freezes. Yeah, you're like, okay, there's a, a, a quarter of a micro inch of frost. We must shut down. Yeah. Yeah, we got the notification before it ever even started to rain that we were shutting down the next day. You're like, okay, I'm in. I'm yeah, in. Everybody was like, not fuck this, we're done. We're not doing it again. Yeah, we don't we don't want that kind of tragedy in our lives. So we'll just go ahead and just take a couple extra days off. And I'm finally prepped and ready for something like that, and it didn't fucking didn't even happen. Yeah, well, hopefully you it have fucking blue balled me. <laughs> hopefully you have all of your leftover pandemic pantry stuff still sitting. Oh, there. I do. Oh, I do. Rice, beans, you know, all the delicious food. So good. Three cases of MREs. We're good. You're We're you're good. fine. You can cook all that up and sit in your hallway and wait for the end of the world, and you're ready. Have some Doritos or some Pop Tarts, please. Have yeah, something yeah, like be that. Fun. Um, which kind of uh, brings us into our <laughs> our wonderful topic today, which is: Can you be fit and fat? And uh, yes, again, can you be fit and fat? F and F. Um, Mass Hobo and I decided this would be the perfect topic because we believe ourselves to be. At least one of those things. <laughs> you can guess which one. You'll figure it out. <laughs> if you've listened to any of our prior podcasts and of our love for all the foods, healthy um, and unhealthy, then then you probably already know. But it's an interesting, uh, It's I think it's an interesting topic. Um, there is a lot of stuff out rolling around in the world of social medias about uh you know how they always have the catchphrases and the and and the the hot spot words or whatever so anti-diet culture that that's a thing that a lot of people are are talking about and um which is kind of this theory that being on a in quotes diet um it's not healthy it's it's not a healthy thing and everybody has different feelings about what a diet is. Uh, but we thought this would be kind of fun uh, because we we are not thin people. I, I think we should say that. We are anti-thin. Oh. No. Uh, I don't know if I'm anti-thin. I'm just not thin. And I don't. Yeah, I'm not against weight, I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want to be like super skinny. Mm-hmm. I just know I don't. I don't want to. I know there's there's old men and there's fat men, but you don't see a lot of old fat men. So, yeah, it's not. You do see a lot of old thin men for sure. Uh, you you do for some reason you do see a lot of fat old ladies. So I have hope for myself. I really do. But they're usually like in the motorized cart at uh, the grocery store, and they're asking me free set of wheels though. They're asking me to find them yeast medication. That's usually what happens. But um, that's another story. But I don't know if I see a lot of fat, really mobile, flexible, healthy older ladies like they usually are in the cart. So so there is that. So we definitely can appreciate that there are absolutely benefits to not carrying around a lot of extra weight. I think we could we could say that comfortably. Um and I am carrying around a lot of extra weight right now. Oh, me too. And I think maybe a lot of people uh, 
during this pandemic have not been able to successfully like maybe shave off a few pounds. I think maybe people have shaved on a few. Can you shave something on a few pounds? I don't know. I don't know. Put on. But yeah. Well. Yeah. There's there's some reasons why we uh, indulge, and and a lot of times it is for comfort. Um, so so if you've done that, don't feel bad. It's not the end of the world. Things are going no, to get better. Happened. Yeah, we've already had the apocalypse, and we're living in it right now. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just a shitty one, not like the movies promised. <laughs> the movies always. The worst thing about the, the 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 shitty landscape of this apocalypse is fucking social media. Yeah. And mainstream media. That's that's the shitty part of it. That stuff's nobody's mm-hmm. driving around in their chopped up old muscle car mm-hmm. and killing each other for gas. No, they don't have like their we machine just, gun mounted on shitty, top. Yeah. And and we you just poke... get really yeah. shitty stuff happening in the news that we as people can't do anything about, but they sure yeah. shit want us scared about it. They haven't. We haven't escalated our apocalypse to the to the cool car with the machine gun mount on top yet. Phase. I mean, it could but go hey, there. Russia and Ukraine are trying. We're, they're trying hard. They're pushing awfully hard. We might get there, but right now it's just the shitty uh, apocalypse where everything is just expensive at the grocery store. Yeah, and where you kind of can't even go have fun. You know, out in real world. So uh, it's not a Gas really... Gas too expensive. Gas is too expensive to be driving around causing a ruckus. Right, right. Exactly. It's a, a, like on a scale of 1 to 10, this apocalypse is just a 2.7 at the best. It's nowhere near Mad Max levels. And I'm disappointed about it, honestly. You know what? If, if it's going to be an apocalypse, I don't want to have to fucking have a day job. You know? Yeah, I, should, I, I shouldn't have to do both. Right. If we're if we're officially in the real apocalypse, I am not logging on and doing my goddamn day job. I'm not paying any more taxes. I'm not paying any more bills. Right. right. Like, aren't you supposed to be free of all that stuff? I. This is just a very lame apocalypse, and it's yeah. requiring me to still have to pretend that I give a shit. And I'm tired of it. Damn it. So, uh, all by the way, in our podcast, we use curse words. In case somebody didn't notice, we also we also mention a subject that's going to be the prime subject, and then go off on a five minute tirade about how shitty this apocalypse has been. We absolutely do that, but you know what? We've only promised to be interesting background noise. We haven't promised to be organized or to stay on topic. That was never a promise made, and we're smart enough to know not to promise things we can't deliver. Yep. And. What we will deliver here is you're going to, we can promise you, you're probably going to laugh at something one of us says, or both of us say, that's all we're going to promise. That's it. And there's not, you're not going to get anything if we don't come through with the promise. Like we don't give you your money back because you didn't pay anything for this. Yeah, so, that's uh, on you. That's not, it's not my fault. You don't find it funny. That's your poor Maybe choice. you need to reflect inward and think about <laughs> your problem. Maybe you need to think about you a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right, this is on you, it's not, not me, us. It's not me, it's you. Yeah, it is not us. It is you, just in case you are not amused. So uh, anyway, I digress, as I usually do. We are going to segue back to the main topic because we usually do, at least 78% of the time, get back on track at some point. So here we are. Uh, so is it possible to be overweight and healthy? So... Uh, We've got some articles here because we always do in-depth research about 10 minutes before we start recording. So here is our pre And we waste all of our good comments on not recording. We did. We said some amazing stuff, you guys. It was life-changing. I mean, Mass Hobo, was your life changed? Probably. Mine too. I'll let you know. Yeah, I mean, I feel in my bones, maybe. Maybe a solid maybe that it was changed. Um, So... Of the survey they did on, I'll give the, I'll even give the credit here. This is an article by Alyssa Jung, J-U-N-G, and it's called, Is It Possible to Be Overweight and Healthy? And it's the Anti-Diet Special Report. Can you do the ticker noise coming in? I might be able to add that in. I might be able to do it. Yeah, the Anti-Diet Special Report. So, um... They did some surveys amongst the chubby people 
and the thin people, all of the people. And it said 50% of, or 57% of readers say they are not satisfied with their current weight or shape. So over half of us are, are not satisfied. Um, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, I think most No, that's pretty people, typical. Yeah, d- aren't really happy with where they're at. And so so one of the things kind of floating out there in the medical community over the last few years, um, if you're into this at all, which if you're a woman, you've sometime at some point in your life thought you were too fat even when you weren't. And for years and years, we've heard about the BMI, the body mass index, and that's been a focal point for determining where you land on this fit and fat, what what percentage of body fat you have kind of indicates, you know, where you're at in the world of fit and fat. So over the last few years, there's been some medical opinion weighing in that maybe, maybe all this... Um, focus on the BMI and those numbers is is not actually an indicator of if someone is healthy or not, or if they're more likely to have some kind of uh, overweight or fat related health issue. Yeah, I think it, the BMI was originally like a lot of things in the medical field. And this is just my thoughts. I'm not a medical expert that they it was supposed to be used as a tool to gauge a person's possibility and then narrow down from there. Like it's the big overarching image that you're like, okay, their BMI is high. So now we need to narrow down what could be the cause. Is it, you know, their lifestyle? Is it a combination of lifestyle genetics? Just whatever. And then, then work in from there. But Mm -hmm. then a lot of people and maybe doctors included, I don't know, just started using it as the overall metric for everything. And it's like, well, yeah, obviously, but, I mean, that's my guess is something just got lost over time to it. Kind of like mm-hmm. how they used to prescribe antibiotics for everything, even if it was a virus and it ended up not being the greatest thing in the world because now we have super bacteria and shit. Yeah. So that's my guess is that's what happened is they just fucking people started saying, well, this is it. And then, you know, the charts are everywhere in the doctor's offices. And it's like, that's all you see. And all of a sudden it's like, well, yeah, that's me. I'm, you know, obese, but that guy could be. 6'2 and 250 pounds and be relatively in shape and a weightlifter and by the mm-hmm. BMI standard he's obese or morbidly obese mm-hmm. yeah but you know I think they started using that like you said as the overarching kind of point where where everything kind of came to meet like this is the most important indicator and I think what's happened is they've just kind of circled around and said wait there's other things that you have to factor in because everybody's so different and some people uh, like one of the things they're saying body size isn't within most people's control like you are born with certain genetic you know indicators your it says genetics your eth- ethnic background your family history are all going to have an impact on your body type. So you don't get to have a small frame if you don't have one. You know, it's just that you're born biologically with a certain, you know, hand of cards here. And uh, so it, it also says they know nutrition can play a role in body weight. Well, I obviously think that's for sure going to be a factor. Uh, but many people who are interested in eating in ways that dietitians suggest could lead to lower weight uh, cannot afford to because many people do not have the time or ability to prepare and buy fresh, healthy meals all the time. That's kind of sad. Like, that's just not some people's reality. And in a, in, we have a culture that's uh, where people are working all the time. They're going to go through the drive through. You know, you're going to go and get something. And a lot of times, drive through food, they even though it's not always 99 cents anymore. You can get like a meal that will fill you up for three or four bucks. And that's way cheaper than buying fresh food and going home and taking the time to cook it. So we've got our lifestyle is kind of created the, the way we live now in modern times is kind of created this go get this fast food stuff. Um, yeah, I think. Well, and it got pushed. A lot of that stuff came about because the discoveries and preservatives in like the 50s and 60s and then them pushing for 
oh, this is all shelf stable because we just got out of this age where we might get bombed at any time and we need food that's going to last. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, well, this shit has been sitting on a shelf for three years and it's still good, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that mentality had a lot of it. And then they realized, well, this shit is super cheap. We can churn it out. It's literally called junk food for a reason. We can churn it out and throw it on a shelf and never have to worry about losing profits over this fresh baked bread that's going to go bad in two days at the yep. bakery when I can throw it on the fucking shelf and it can sit there for a week, you know, mm-hmm. and not even go bad. It won't even go stale, you know. It'll, yeah. It'll be there and always, you know. Yeah, we started eating, you know, and it, it is that old adage, you are what you eat. So when you're eating a lot of stuff with chemicals and preservatives and things like that, and it, a lot of people have reactions to that. You can have allergic reactions and, and it can mess with your metabolism. And and inflammatory diseases skyrocketed once they realized yep. that, that there's a link with the preservatives. and Yeah. I, I mean, it's one of those things. It's like everything else in moderation. But for a while there, that was all there. Like, everybody was pushing that. Everybody's like, yeah, 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 it's fine. You, you know, just whatever. Get this on the shelf, on the shelf. On, and then that's not how grocery stores used to be. It used to always just be like the outside of the grocery store where all the fresh food and everything else was. And people went to the store three or four times a week. Mm-hmm. Now people only go and want to go with the minimum once a week, and some want to go less than that. Mm-hmm. So you're going to buy so. a lot of that stuff, and the frozen food has preservatives in it too. So oh god, so many, so many, and it was wh- one of the things they've said here is what are better ways to measure your health. So if we're not just going to go by the BMI, then what are other indicators? And they were saying part of it's the way you, way and where you carry the weight. If you carry a lot of your fat around the middle, that's supposedly more dangerous. And I know that that uh, leads to thing like those are the things that mess with your glucose levels, you know, getting diabetes, uh, fatty liver, people who have that extra weight more around their middle are more prone towards that. But, you know, you'll see people who are real bottom heavy, like it's mostly in their legs and thighs, or you'll see people who carry it up on t- top like an apple shape. So there are different ways to carry that weight. And what they're saying is some things that no matter what that body type are, some things that help promote lower blood pressure are doing things like regular exercise. And that decreases your risk for type 2 diabetes. It helps reduce your risk for heart disease. Um, And then, of course, it's the old standard stuff that we've all heard a million times, having a well-balanced diet, proper hydration, restful sleep. Um, So none of this is groundbreaking none of it is earth shattering it's kind of the common sense approach i'd say that we've known for a long time i think i think what my issue is with it is out of all those things i think people would would name almost any one of those but the one is that that is actually supposedly the most important the most important key to being healthy and reducing your risk of diabetes heart disease and cholesterol levels is restful sleep. That That is actually the first thing you're supposed to do to promote a healthy lifestyle. And it's probably one of the ones we miss the most often, I believe. It's easy to miss it. It's easy to close that gap and sleep. Well, it's not even about how much you could sleep because for some people, you could, they could sleep 12 hours and it not be restful sleep. Yeah, it's about it being restful. I and, mean, six hours of good sleep is better than 12 hours of shitty sleep. Yeah. There's there's a thing about your sleep cycles. I had an app um, that I used, and it would tell you, um, like, if you have to get up at 6.30 in the morning, you could pun- punch that in, and you'd say you're going to bed at 10 o'clock at night. It would give you, like, three options of when you should wake up, and it was all based on sleep cycles, because if they're about an hour and a half long, restful sleep is about 90-minute cycles, so you might do two of those or three of them or whatever, but it, it, they were saying it's better to get up like at 3.30 in the morning than oversleep into that midway through that next sleep cycle. So they would give yeah. you like three times you could wake up and I tried it. It was actually, it, it was actually pretty helpful. And sometimes I was yeah, like- Yeah, there was some oh. study or something I read like that where people did what they call, I forget the name of it, but it's a specific type of sleep like that where they do cycles. Mm-hmm. They do a cyclic sleep where they take a lot of shorter rests, mm-hmm. but they make sure they set aside the time to, to specifically sleep for however long that is mm-hmm. and then wake up and, and do it all over again. And then some people's like natural rhythm is geared towards 
being up late and then sleeping yep throughout the day and stuff and so i think it's just finding what works but that's me i could stay up late and sleep well not all day but that's how i've always been ever since i can remember i've been like that and yeah i i'm working one time i was working night shifts and it was awesome mm -hmm. i loved working night shift most people hate it i didn't mind it at all it's your circadian rhythm i think is what they call it and everybody tends to have a certain one and we used to rest at night because bad things happen to humans at nighttime in, in the days of yore, like when we were cave people. So the circadian rhythm started setting that we should be in at night. We shouldn't be out being active and this and that. So that's a natural rhythm for a lot of us. But some of I like I'm a night owl. I would prefer to stay up late and get up a little later. Like I, I like to go to bed at one or two in the morning. You know, that would be my natural thing. And then I like to get up like maybe 8 30, 9 o'clock, something like that. Yeah, um, I went to bed. <laughs> I stayed up till, what was it almost six o'clock? Yeah, this morning. Yeah. So I wake up till 12. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and some people just, you know, so, so learning those things and maybe training yourself into sleep hygiene. But, but it's just so funny that, um, I've worked with an obesity doctor before and she said, we need to get your sleeping habits down. Like that's number one before anything else, before anything you eat, anything you drink, we must well, get your That's when your, your body sleeping. does all of its heavy lifting pretty much is when you're asleep because then it doesn't have to worry about everything else. Yeah. It's resetting everything. It's working on all kinds of stuff. So, so getting restful sleep and then proper hydration. I suck at drinking water. I'm so bad I've gotten at much it. better at that over the years. I can say I have gotten much better at that. I, I drink some. I probably get in the 64 ounces, but I should be getting in like 100. And it's just something I always constantly have to chip away at. Um, but proper hydration, that's another one. You know, it's like a lot of times we're running around in a dehydrated state. And that's not good for us I either. I don't think people realize how important water is to just maintaining like a normal level in on your own like it helps with hunger it helps with mental fog mm -hmm. it helps with your skin because if your skin's properly hydrated it'll be clear mm -hmm. and, you know you're it'll be more lively more what is can't think of the word resilient i guess i should say yeah it you helps know, you, with you have the you have the elasticity there yeah and the it collagen. doesn't dry out and yeah, yeah. you just Stay hydrated. Don't overhydrate because you can kill yourself like that. Yeah, you don't want to hydro, you know. Your that. urine Hydrosis. should be a straw color. There you have it. You guys, you learned stuff. If it's too clear, stuff. then you're overhydrating. And if it's too yellow, you're underhydrating. Yeah, if it's so, the orange, you're in bad shape. Don't have orange pee. It's not good. A good trick that, uh, and I need to do it myself, that uh, a firearms guy, he was in the special operations way back in the day in the 80s and stuff. He says he starts every morning with just a quart of water. He has it by the bed, and the first thing he does after he wakes up is undoes the cap on his bottle and chugs a quart of water, and then that's how he starts his day. Yeah. Just do it before, right when you're getting out of bed, and then promptly 30 minutes later, you'll go pee a quart of water. It's perfect. Yeah. It's flushing all that bad stuff out, people. Do it. So, um, so none of this stuff, though, none of it's groundbreaking. I think we all know what what we're supposed to do to be healthier people the problem always is how do you make it happen how do you do that stuff and that is not a simple answer i i think it's just it not. never is it's it's one of those every person is, has to figure out what works for them and so you try dozens of things and it's like well that didn't work for me so i'm just not going to do it and it feels that way, like anything else, when you try and try and try and it tanks, you're like, well, fuck it, I'm not doing it anymore. Mm -hmm. You just got to keep chugging along. Um, I'm yeah. nobody to really listen to, but I tried the intermittent fasting for a while and I ended up getting like acid reflux so bad from it, from not eating that I couldn't do it. Like I, it just, it was awful. Um, I do sometimes, I sometimes can do like a, about 16 hours, 18 hours is the max. Um mm -hmm. I can push longer depending, but I was doing, I was doing intermittent fasting for like a few weeks and it was going all right until I started every day mm -hmm. around when I would normally eat, I'd start getting acid reflux right before it. Yeah. And so I had to go back to a normal eating schedule. And so I've been trying to sort that out. Usually I don't, I don't eat lunch. I usually eat breakfast and then I don't have a lunch and then I'll eat dinner or make dinner. 
my um, that even. I just went through some acid reflux thing with my gastroenterologist, and the whole problem with people that have if you're if you're a person who has acid reflux or GERD, um, the whole issue is they they tolerate smaller meals more often better. That's better for people who have acid reflux because your body can process that better. Is able to do what it needs to do. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's hard for people who have GERD or acid reflux to do the intermittent fasting. It just tends to yeah. not work so well, which is a bummer because there's other benefits, of course, that you're mentioning to the intermittent fasting. A lot of people who do low carb swear by that and have lost a lot of weight doing it. But there, you know, you always have to find the thing that works for you. What works for everybody else may not work for you. And I think another thing that people forget to figure in is your your stress, your stress levels. Um, when you are anxious, when you're stressed out, when you're under a lot of pressure and you're worrying about a lot of stuff, you create a lot of cortisol. That makes you hold on to weight. It doesn't let you release weight. Um, and who in our current day world isn't suffering from some kind of stress? Somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So finding ways to relax, whatever those are, that are not health unhealthy things. I mean, there's unhealthy ways to relax, but don't finding don't do heroin to relax. That's not exactly. That was the one. Crack I was is probably a better of. option if you're going to pick a drug. Meth, you know, meth is cheap. Yeah, um, but <laughs> you can make it yourself. <laughs> you can it's learn how to, to make meth at home. Methamphetamine than it is heroin. I'm just saying. Another don't do thing, drugs. Don't, 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 don't do, do drugs. drugs, kids. You guys were joking. Don't don't do drugs. Um, so finding ways, and you know, some people do yoga, some people do guided meditation, whatever it is, if it's watching a TV show and vegging out, if it's listening to music, but find a thing that takes your mind off of stuff um, and, and try to get a little bit when you're feeling that. To me, it's always kind of a buzz, and I just feel anxious. That's how my anxiety, I just feel nervous, and like nothing's going to work, and everything's going bad, and how am I going to do this, and how am I going to do that, and I start multitasking and just overwhelming myself. So if you feel overwhelmed, you're you're stressed out, and I think we're probably living in a time right now where we are all feeling that kind of pressure and stress, and probably not very many of us are finding ways to to kind of relax and de-escalate that stress that's happening. So uh, you should probably listen to Smart Tacular. I, I feel like we should be prescribed by doctors for stress relief. I I don't know why we aren't, to be honest. Yeah. It's a shame. It's just a damn shame. Get on that, whatever the American Medical Board is. The AMA or something. A, Mayo Clinic, call it, put an article out or something. Yeah. I can't believe we have not been prescribed because we should be. Uh, but find a thing that just helps you do that. And I think the other thing honestly starts. And find something to do with friends or family yeah. if you got kids. I, I need to do that. Me and my kid both need to do that. Because mm-hmm. I don't want her to deal with the bullshit I'm having to deal with now as an adult. I'm already mm-hmm. working on that. In other avenues, mm-hmm. trying to teach her about, you know, investing and stuff like that. Stuff nobody ever talked to me about. And so now I'm trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell her, like, don't do what I did. Mm-hmm. And I'm also trying, like, to stay on top of both of our eating while she's with me. And, like, bro, we can't just fucking go ape shit just because it's here. Like, mm-hmm. She's like, Restraint. come on, it's so good. I'm like, I know, but we got to fuck chill, bro. I was like, I don't want to buy bigger clothes. I don't know if you want... I was like, well, you're not paying for them, and I don't want to buy you bigger clothes, so you're not eating either. It's like, this shit's expensive, dog. <laughs> it's exactly No, true. I don't tell that to my daughter. I don't fucking say I'm not an asshole, because I wouldn't want anybody saying it to me when I was that age. Well, and it's it's not that... Um, but she realizes that because she's brought it up, and I'm like, well, then we'll work on it. We'll yeah. Start with drinking more water, eating less bullshit, and eating smaller portions when we do have food at home. And I think a lot of times the the gist of it. People eat out of boredom. I think there's a lot of boredom eating that happens. Commented with her about that. I've seen it. She's like, I'm hungry. I'm like, Are you hungry or are you bored? She's like, Well, I think I'm bored. I was like, Okay. Yeah. I was like, if you really want something, get like an orange or something like that. Because I was explaining to her the difference between nutrient rich and energy or, or nutrient dense and energy dense food. Yeah. And I was like, that orange, I was like, you could eat that whole bag of oranges. And it not equal one of whatever's in the cabinet over there that's a snack food. Mm-hmm. And I was like, with the orange, you're getting vitamins, minerals, 
ton of fiber. Mm-hmm. All that stuff is good for you. And I was like, yes, it's sugar, but it's an orange. It's everything else, and that's going to offset the sugar that's in the orange. Yeah. And it's not a processed sugar. It's not corn syrup. I'd rather have you eat a natural, a, a, a obscene amount of what people would think would be a natural fruit, yeah. something like that, than an apple or yeah an a, apple an orange yeah, yeah. Grapes, grapes whatever yeah. anything cuz all of that that item has value in it of some sort yes it's sweet yes it's sugar but it it's wrapped in something that's fibrous it has extra vitamins and minerals uh it's going to satiate you longer because of the fiber that it contains it's still a better choice that have been shown to reduce certain cancer risks it's Just it's fucking, still a better choice even if yeah. it's not always the most optimal. I would rather have you eat still... a whole bag of oranges that cost me six dollars than the whole bag of chips that cost me two and a half dollars. Exactly, and and that boredom, that idea that, and it's just there's emotional eating. It's it's a huge thing. Yeah. Whether it's boredom, sadness, happiness, whatever. A lot of people are emotional eaters. It triggers and... the same chemical as not being, but it triggers dopamine and all the other stuff in your head. Like you're like, oh man, and it's. They've designed that food to do that. They've designed it specifically to trigger that so you buy more and eat more. And mm-hmm. when you eat more, you got to buy more. And then you feel mm-hmm. bad for eating it. So what do you do to feel better? You eat some more. And then you're like, what the fuck happened to my life? And you're sitting around and you got six empty bags of chips. And you're like, who the fuck am I at this point? <laughs> and I know that just... sounds like it's coming from and that's coming from a specific incident. It was very me. specific. It has, <laughs> it's not... I usually realize that I'm spiraling out of control, and I stop myself. Well, I don't want to hear no bullshit. All right, stop I, picking on me. I, I I appreciate the share. I appreciate the share, and and some of these are mythical. They are not true experiences. Yeah, I don't buy that many chips. As fat as I look, I don't buy that much snack food. Um, and and I oh, think- I do. Okay, I will have to be true about this. My last grocery order. Uh, being that I live in Texas and there's a lot of people that celebrate Mardi Gras, mm-hmm. I bought a king cake. Oh, yeah. I know what those are. Yes. I've never had one. I've never Aww. had a king cake. And I saw them and I was like, I'm going to try it. And if I don't like it or whatever, I don't buy like cakes that often. I don't mm-hmm. buy that. So I was like, I've always wanted a king cake because I always hear about them. I always see them in the grocery store. And I'm like, God damn it. I'm 37 years old. I'm a grown ass man. I want a fucking king cake. So was it good? I bought one. I don't know. I don't get it till Monday. Oh, it's a, okay. It's supposed to be a pineapple cream king Ooh, cake. Ooh, my God. That sounds delightful. And that's... I know. That's uh, what I bought. And, and part of this whole thing is that's so difficult about when people are... Especially people who maybe are fit or who don't have a slow metabolism or they've never really had a weight problem. They're just like, well, just be healthier. Like, just go start exercising and just <laughs> eat better. And there's just so many... Most of the layers to being overweight are not being practical or just following what this is. It's that it's emotionally difficult to do it's it. A mental, it, it. Getting it's your a head mental right game. is the first thing you have to do because no matter how much you diet and all that stuff, if you're not, and, and I've seen those ads for like Noom now, and they're talking yep. about like fixing the psychological side mm-hmm. and the mental side first and then worrying about the, you know, food. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great way to handle it. I think with a lot of people, it is tied to a mental thing. It's not just like you you can't just exist and then gain weight. There has to be mm-hmm. something that causes overconsumption or whatever. And a lot of people realize, oh, God, I was programmed from childhood to mm-hmm. be this way. And nobody realized it. My parents didn't know. Yeah. So I'm sure if they saw it coming, they would have done something about it. You know, yeah. it's, they didn't realize it because that's a holdover from the way they grew up. It was like clean your plate because, you know, 20 years before they were born, some people were having to grow their own food, and there still wasn't enough to go around. Some people lived through the Great Depression, the the Dust Bowl, yep. you know, World War Two, World War One, you know, and that's all holdovers that they learned from that. And it's like you have to eat everything you have because you never know when you won't have it. And then clear your plate, got to clean a point your plate. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, and then we got to a point where we always have plenty, and that's not guaranteed every day, but regardless, where you could just go anywhere and pick up whatever you need. And it's like, well, you better clean your plate. And then plates got bigger and everything else got bigger. And yeah. it's just a I, fucking... I doubt... I blame marketing. I blame fucking marketing. <laughs> I doubt there's very many people that actually stop eating when they're actually satisfied. I think most oh, people... No. They see it well, and they're like, I don't want to waste it. Well, finish well, that's how their I plate. am. I don't like wasting food. I or do if not they like go, wasting food. It bugs me. Or if you go to a restaurant... You know, they'll bring you a much larger portion than you would normally eat. And a lot of people 
will keep eating till that plate is cleared because it's just so ingrained. And it's very few people stop eating when they're dissatisfied, which is when you're actually supposed to stop is when you're satisfied, not full satisfied and there's 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 a a huge difference between those two things so we haven't been conditioned to eat to satisfaction we've been conditioned to clear a plate no matter what that outcome is it might be satisfied or it might be full but we're we're more yeah and then i think what happened is you get to where it's i'm full and then the next time you eat that same amount slightly more Mm -hmm. slightly more slightly more and then by the time you realize it you're eating double what you would have eaten a couple of years ago, and you don't you don't realize, and you never do realize. It. You're just slightly more, slightly more a bite here. The thing is, a bite here, a bite there adds up. And, and I'm guilty of it. I'm fucking. You can look at yeah. me and see that I'm guilty of it. But yeah. I think it's realizing that and telling. And the hardest part is like coming to terms with and, and processing all that and going through it. And I, again, I think the mental part is the first thing you should tackle. Is that. And when you and, go, but, that's hard. It's hard. There's almost like not hard. enough people to help each other out, and then when, people don't want to help, and then it's a fucking shit show. When you go to uh, an, a thrift store or something, if you find old dinner plates, old plates from the '60s and '50s, they're small. They're the size of what I would call our salad plates. They're about. They're no more than six inches in diameter. That's that's yeah. about what dinner plates used to be, and now. They're about uh, like nine 10, inches to ten inches. Nine, ten, something like that. Yeah. yeah, they've way expanded those. And I, I, something I started a few years ago, and and we're going to kind of get into the next, I think, portion of this, which is how how do you tackle this? How do you decide when you're going to be healthier? How do you how do you do it? One of the first things I did is I traded out my my large dinner plates, and I eat off salad plates now. And I started this about five years ago, and. I just, and I don't pile it up seven feet taller. You still just put, you know, the normal amount, it does look like a full plate. So I'm still getting yeah. that idea that I'm going to clear my plate because that's a hard one for me to to do. Just like you, I, I don't like wasting food. I don't necessarily love leftovers. Some things aren't a good leftover. So I like to finish whatever's on my plate. So I think what people do is they over, they get overzealous and they decide, that they're going to become a healthy person and that it's going to happen overnight. And starting Monday, it's always starting Monday. We're starting on the first of the month. Why, why would you want to? Why would you want to start on a Monday? That's the worst day to start anything on. Yeah, I know. You start work. You got everything. Kids got to go to school. I know, but start everybody that shit says on like fucking Saturday. I don't know when you got free time. Well, but that's a weekend, and you're going to want to celebrate with some Doritos. So Think exactly. So people always say, "I'm going to start on Monday," and um, and they are not only going to start changing how they eat, they're going to add a whole bunch of exercise. They're going to drink 100 ounces of water. And they put on so many new things that they've never done, that they're not used to, that are not habits. They start this January 1st um, as a New Year's resolution. And by January 12th, they're done. They've they've burnt yeah, themselves out and they're you, done. You bury yourself. And what I've learned... Um, and I'm still in the process of learning uh, on a journey to becoming a healthier person. <laughs> on a journey to becoming a healthier person with Jez and Mastobo. So uh, what I've learned is that all of this takes time, especially if you have a significant amount of weight to lose. Unless you do something drastic, like you go on an all-shake diet or Which a... Which that's, again, temporary because... You You're can't n- keep that up forever. Can't sustain, can't sustain. Or it's you get- It's not nutritionally viable. You start to lose things in that. If you uh, have a gastric bypass, if you have the weight loss surgery- uh, And even then, before that, they still make you like lose a certain amount to prove you're willing to- Do the things do you're going to have to do. And it is a-, a ton of people that end up gaining it back because- Yeah, you can restretch the tiny little pouch yeah. they make. And- you're, you're committing to a lifetime of multivitamins that are very expensive. So there's drastic things you can do, um, but most things you have to do are sustainable things. And I'm still in a, a process. Like I said, it's been about five years ago. Um, and I've been, in quotes, dieting most of my adult life. And I've been an overweight person most of my adult life. And it's because I've done that all or nothing way of doing it most of my life and it I can do it for a while 
maybe even a few months, I'll lose quite a bit of weight and then I'll get fed up because I'll plateau or things will stop for whatever reason and then I give up. I say it's not working, even though it's obviously worked, but I can't sustain it. That's what's been my problem in the past. And then I gain it back and then usually plus some more. So what I've done different this time is, and this is because I had a lot of support and help from my husband, who's a very, very uh, supportive and smart person. He just gave me some really good insight and he was like, you you cannot do all this in one leap. It just no, no, doesn't no work. He's like small, sustainable things that you can live with. Build a habit and then and add then, a new one once you once that one exactly. become, once that becomes a daily thing for you. Try to add something new. Uh, yeah, so and he's work, like maybe just do the meal thing at first because you can do that on like a Sunday yep. afternoon while you're not doing much else. You can do the meals or, or even just even just planning a menu you'll make over the week will yep help you. Plan um, plan your menu and shop from a list when you're trying to be healthy. Go into the store with a list for the things you're going to make for the week for your meal prep or whatever, and do not deviate. The, I've had the most success when I've really been on track when I have made a grocery list. And it just makes sense. And you save money. You save a lot of money when you do that. Don't shop when you're I hungry. I try to do a grocery lists, and I just I, I'm not a list kind of person. Mm-hmm. Unless I know exactly what I want. The problem is I can't ever think of the meals I want to make yeah. for the next week to buy the groceries to make the meals for the next week. And so yeah, I'll sit down and I'll just sit for an hour and a half, and nothing will happen. It's like it's harder than writing a fucking story. Mm-hmm. I can make up a story out of thin air pretty quickly if I wanted to. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. I haven't done it in a while. But you asked me to write a grocery list and plan meals for a week, and I'll fucking ruin it every time. And then another thing is, I'm not bad. I can eat the same thing kind of over and over. My kid, mm-hmm. on the other hand, gets bored very quickly. Like, if we yeah. have leftovers for more than, like, two days, she's like, I don't want that. And I'm like, bro, it's what I have. It's what I spent money on. If you don't want to eat it, then don't eat it. <laughs> and then she will might eventually eat it or something. And I'm like, dude, I don't even, whatever. Like, I Because I've eaten, the, I've had the same breakfast 90% of the time for the last two years, mm-hmm. two eggs, two sausage patties every morning. Actually, a lot, of, a lot of a uh, lot uh, doctors, uh, whatever nutritionists say that's good to have a, a standard breakfast, the same one. They, they say that creates some stability and it's actually supposed to be pretty good. Like a lot of times they'll say, you know, oatmeal or whatever it is that they tell you, whatever it is, two eggs and a sa- sausage patty. Um I think that what you just said is the hardest part is people don't know where to start. They don't know how to get that menu list. And that is where things sometimes I do think things like Noom or Weight Watchers or something. Some people do not have the creativity or they're not great cooks. They're just or they're not seasoned cooks or experienced cooks. And that overwhelms them. The and idea that's scary too on your own because you don't want to like fuck your food up. Right. Now you're out. Your meal you were planning on making, mm-hmm. the money of the ingredients and everything that got potentially ruined, and you're down on yourself because you're like, fuck, I ruined it. Like, yeah. And then you can spiral out, and then next thing you know, you're fucking binging on shit because yeah. it and makes that's, you feel better. And, and that's like, these are things that people don't think about. It's like, you, sometimes you have to look at why you failed, you know, and that's how you learn yeah. how to succeed. So if you're not good at that, you you may want to consider... Doing a or thing even like the new pre-made meals that are getting super huge now. There's like six or eight companies out there that are yeah, doing like Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. There's and people that I forget who it is, but there's um, Brian Shaw, another one of the world's strongest men guys, and and a few of them companies send them you know food mm-hmm. to talk about on their YouTube channels and shit. But they're pre-portioned meals, and you just microwave. It yeah. comes in a tray, and you microwave it. But it's not preservative-filled microwave food. It comes in a fresh pack, like. Yep. With dry ice and everything else, and it's fresh meat. Yep. You know, that's usually pre cooked slightly, and then you finish cooking it at home. And they have options like bison, and, mm-hmm. and, and you know, everything you can say, well, this is what I'm shooting for, like lower carb. They'll send you something that's got a lot of green vegetables and meat. Protein. Yeah. And, and yeah. good, healthy fats. Yeah. So, and then, so their their options are out there. Do some Googling if you're going to take any advice. It's your health. Uh-huh. You know, it's your health, and your health is worth something. Um, 
it's worth everything. If you don't have your health, you don't really have a lot of anything else. So if you have to do like a HelloFresh or um, a service like that, they are kind of spendy. They are expensive. But to start with, you might get ideas, even if you just did HelloFresh. you'll be buying less groceries too. Yeah, for a month. In the end, it probably... Like a month, yeah, a month or two. They have different washes levels you out. can do. You can pre bay six months or whatever. And then you can say, well... I'm not going to buy groceries for dinner. I'll only buy breakfast. Well, well when you out. start, and it won't be as much, but you'll 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 get some ideas, and then you can keep. They send you a recipe card with everything yeah. that's in the box. Just buy that shit again if you liked it. Yes, buy it you on could your learn. Own and it might solve. give you the ideas. It might you might yeah. pick out your favorites, and then you learn how to cook them you because can mix they. It up. You can yeah. even change certain things out, and so so invest in you know just getting an education on how to cook how to make a menu there's tons of youtube things out there there's tons of stuff if you google easy you know low carb meals to make a lot Soups of them are simple are, i make i'll give you one i'm gonna give you one right now everybody here's a quick tip it's super easy and it's delicious you take chicken tenders like the breast tenders you take, um, and you can do a whole package, like that's usually about a pound of chicken tenders. You take um, about three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise, just regular mayonnaise. I do a little squirt of lemon juice in that. And then it's fresh shredded Parmesan cheese, also about three quarters of a cup. Mix that into a paste. You just lay that on top of your chicken. You can do salt and pepper and garlic powder if you want. Uh, you just, it's like a paste. You put it on top of the raw chicken tenders and you put it in the oven on 375 for about three, 35 minutes or until that gets kind of like a crust. It forms however brown you, or crispy you like that. It's called three ingredient chicken, but I make it four. It's supposed to be mayonnaise, chicken, and Parmesan cheese are the three, but I add the little bit of lemon juice and salt and pepper. You can add garlic to it you could put mushrooms in it or onions you can add other things but that is yep. fucking delicious and it's easy uh, and, and you you can't mess it up anybody who's not even a cook can make that and it's delicious yep. it's easy it's so you don't have to tend to that and if you can't cook get you something like an instapot a crock pot an air fryer an air fryer anything yes. and those don't take up a lot of room so if you're in a small space a crock pot's great because you can just fucking start it when you leave for work in the morning, mm-hmm. put your shit in there, get up 10 minutes early, put your shit in the crock pot, put it on low. I know there's recipes that say cook it on high. Fuck those recipes. Cook yeah, everything always on do low. it low. Yeah, it gets low Because flavor. if you do it high, it's just going to scorch it anyway and your food will be dry as shit. So do it on low. Mm-hmm. Do it just longer than it asks. You can check it when you get home, but low is not going to completely torture food like high will. Yeah. So just do low. Just stick to low. Even if the recipe says high, just do low for double the amount of time or, or add extra time on. Yeah. Either way. Get you something like that because those recipes are stupid simple. You can take frozen stuff. That's what's crazy. You can throw a bunch of frozen shit in there mm-hmm. with some... I use cream cheese a lot. I use pecani sauce a lot because you mm-hmm. can just dump that stuff in there. Let it sit. It'll all cook down. The moisture from the frozen vegetables gets added. If you want, you can add some stock, some beef stock, chicken stock, mm-hmm. whatever vegetable stock if that's your thing and you don't eat meat Mm -hmm. you can do all that shit and problem solved and you got a meal that'll last you two days three days all week depending on if you're single and all that other stuff and it's you can take it right from the crock pot and put it in the fridge you don't even have to get another container if you don't want to and your fridge can hold it like you got options you got options so so it's just about learning these new habits. That's really, you You have to try to set yourself up for success. And I think the reason most people fail when they're trying to do this is, first of all, it's a big deal. It's a big deal to, to make changes like this and they do get overwhelmed and then they just end up back where they were. And it is the emotional game. It's being prepared, understanding you're going to take small steps and you're going to have progress and take three or four steps forward and then you're going to regress and you're going to take a couple steps back and you just do that and and recognize that weight loss a, a scale number should not be your goal if you do that you're just mentally setting yourself up for all kinds of tragedy because a scale is just a reflection of literally your overall body weight it does not tell you oh you've You've lost, you've lost seven pounds of fat. Measurements and are better. Measurements yes. are better than weight. If you're going to measure anything, take your body measurements, your legs, your yep. arms, your chest, your stomach, all that stuff. You don't need a scale. Because that will change, you that will change more than your weight because 
mm-hmm. you may lose weight and get smaller in those areas and not and but if you stepped on a scale it'll tell you weigh the same because your body's transitioning yep. that stuff because muscle it takes doesn't, up less room it's yes. the density is different than fat so yeah yeah it's it takes up less space fat takes up more space in your body and makes you bigger and muscle will weigh a pound of fat and a pound of muscle weigh the same but they do not take up the same amount of space in your body density kids it's, it's science so i have had much more success and felt much better when i threw away the scale and just started using the measuring tape and your clothes how your clothes fit just pay attention to that so stop worrying about what you weigh and start worrying about or don't worry and just start focusing more on how you feel. How are you feeling? What's your energy level? Are you hydrated? Are you getting that good sleep? And it's still a process. It still takes time to go through it. But like over five years, I've lost like 90 pounds over five years. I still have that much more to go. I, and I've I've went back and forth, like even in that 90 pounds, sometimes I've gained 10 back, then I've lost 15. I've wavered, I've plateaued. And then Sometimes I plateaued for a year out of that, but then I refocus. And when I look now at the habits I have now, they are different than they were five years ago. They're better. And, but I am not putting, the other thing is don't put an end date, you know, don't put an end date. Like I have to lose 90 pounds by December 1st, unless your doctor has told you that you have an end date because you need a surgery or there's something like that. There's no reason to have an end date. It makes it feel like you're doing this as a temporary fix to get to a goal, but then what do you do when you hit the goal? No, these are changes you have to make for your lifetime. And and that's a lot to encompass sometimes, is that I'm trying to do this. It's not a diet. A diet is any way you eat is a diet. We've made it... A lifestyle change is what I'd call it. Yeah, and we've made the word diet mean you're going to go on Bad a diet stuff. and you're going to lose weight. You can weight. get off of it. Yeah. yeah, but anything you eat is a diet. We have a yeah, standard American diet. So make so, a lifestyle change slowly over time. Yeah. That's how rivers that's how rivers cut through rock over eons. It just it's a little bit at a time. Yeah, and, and you incorporate when you start weight loss is eighty percent what you eat and twenty percent exercise. That's it's much more about changing your eating habits, but that exercise can it, the movement is still really important because it just makes you feel better. It just makes you feel better. It's better for your joints. It, it helps you with those things. It's not going to necessarily, you can't go eat four, you know, Twinkies and a bag of Doritos and uh, a Big Mac and then say, I'm just going to go, gonna go work. 30 minutes at, and be like, yeah. I'm going to go work. <laughs> I'm going to go work it off at the gym. It's like you got to do that combination of just that. And then there's like the 80 20 rule. Try to follow the healthy, good stuff 80% of the time and give yourself a, some slack. Have your king cake, you know, once in a while. Have the Doritos once in a while and just learn the balance and say, well, this is my life and this is how I do this now. And um, and I think the other thing um, that they say is support. Finding a support group, having people Online. in your life. There's yep. apps everywhere, your friends. If you got a roommate and y'all aren't, you know, and they're not a total fucking nutcase, because mm-hmm. I know that happens to some people, work together if that's a goal y'all want to do. Or if your roommate's already that way, maybe talk to them about it. And if they're not super extra and they're a real friend, they'll help you slowly work towards that. And if they're a really good friend, when you start slipping up, they'll check you for it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and that's that helps. And that's... I think that's part of where I struggle is I have friends, but they're all over. Mm-hmm. None of them are here. So that makes it hard to, you know, work on anything. And I should probably look and find somebody that's going to help. But it's like fucking time in the day. I got to be, a you know, and, and it's rough. And I know that's not an excuse, but it, it makes it a little more difficult. So I've, I've been toying with the idea of looking at a local MMA gym or even just a local boxing gym mm-hmm. and maybe trying to see if, if they're, you know, will let anybody join and, and sh- come in three or four days a week and just work with somebody, mm-hmm. you know. Well, and I... Just, I don't know if I can afford that sort of stuff. Yeah, and and finding someone who has a similar outlook is really helpful because if you get someone who's, I measure every grain of rice, I do this, I do that, and they're texting you all day just, long, telling you what they're eating all day long, and that's almost... Yeah, that just, you're like, ah, you, fuck. You've got to find a good fit. You've got to find someone, 
your support group should be people that, you know, uplift you and don't make you feel anxious or, or like you're not doing good enough. And don't let it negatively infect the relationship. Like if it's, yeah. if you realize, oh shit, we're starting to get into more arguments about stuff. Yep. Pump the brakes. Yeah. And say, hey, let's just slow down on this. Yeah. You know, you're who you are. I am who I am. And we'll slow down. You know, if somebody's pushing somebody more than the other. Pushing each other is good, but if you push too hard, you'll just get resistance back. And so just one of my personal... Give or take. Yeah, exactly. And one of my personal observations, one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give about becoming a healthier person is never attempt weight loss out of self-hatred. Never attempt weight loss out of self-hatred. I said it twice. Because a lot of us look in the mirror one day and get fed up and we're like fuck this. I'm done. I fucking hate myself. I've said that to myself before. And I know other people oh, have. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, I do. and the self-esteem is absolutely in the gutter. And you get angry. And there's a plus and positive to that. I mean, there's a plus and a negative. And, and the plus is sometimes you need to kick yourself in the ass to get started. And you have to be fed up. But never let that take you to a place of hatred, of self-hatred, because that will not help you succeed moving forward. You have to take the hatred part out of it. You can be angry, you can be disappointed, but do not put yourself in the I fucking hate myself place. It will not get you anywhere. And it will ultimately undo everything you try to do. So wherever you're at in this process, if you need to lose five pounds, 50 pounds, 500 pounds, no matter where you're at starting a journey to be a healthier person, like yourself and give yourself kudos that you want to change. It's hard to change. It is not easy. And it takes a lot of effort and self-discipline and you're not going to get the results you want if you aren't proud of yourself. And don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about what they say. Don't, don't worry about them. What you think about yourself is the most important thing. So that's why it's so important to be kind to yourself and give yourself props when you do well, you know, and when you're not doing well, forgive yourself and reset and just, just reset. A lot of people will have a bad Friday and they'll eat bad and they'll go, fuck, I fucked this up. I fucked up breakfast and they could just get back on track at lunch, but they don't. They feel like they just fucked up the whole day. So they eat bad the whole day. And then the whole day turns into the whole weekend. Fuck, I fucked up Friday. And then all of a sudden... Might as well roll it into Saturday. Yeah, roll it into Saturday. And then it's Sunday. And then Sunday morning comes and you had two dozen donuts. Yeah, it's just like... it's So just recognize you can reset at any point. You don't have to wait till Monday. Yep. So... You could reset mid-meal if you realize you're fucking up and be like, all right, let's pump the brakes on this. And Exactly, exactly. But... um. Here we are. I've done that before where I was eating and I was like, I'm eating too much, you fucking idiot. Stop. What are you doing? <laughs> exactly. And just... And I'm like, you're right, man. You're real smart sometimes. And I was like, yeah, I know. Why don't you listen to me more? I should listen to me more. Hmm. Why don't I listen God. to me? But you guys, if you're if you're out there and you have this, you know, obviously it's, it's not just you. This is a... We have a whole country of people who are struggling with this, ex, this same exact issue. And... You're, you're not alone and everybody's um, trying to figure out ways to, to beat this and it's different for everyone. It really is. You have to find the thing that works. But the bottom line is I can tell you as somebody who's been overweight my whole adult life, my, my cholesterol for the first time in my life, I got my first high cholesterol reading this last year. That was the first time. And my BMI has been over whatever the 30% or whatever it is forever. So I have low blood pressure. It's never been high. I My cholesterol was has only been high one time and it's probably an anomaly because I had cortisone shots which elevate it. I'm not diabetic. So I'm, I've been lucky. You know, the older I get, the, the less those things are going to work efficiently. I'll probably start seeing those numbers go up. I'm 56 years old. So unless I continue to try to address this, it is it is going to be worse as I get older. But I will tell you the thing that it has affected and that I really regret is that it does impact your, your joints and it does impact your mobility. 
you cannot carry um, 50 plus extra pounds, 100 plus extra pounds and not have it work on your knees negatively affect or your shoulders so knees ankles ankles everything you will have gravity's a motherfucker and it don't give a shit no who you are so even if your blood work is decent which mine is i absolutely you'll start getting arthritis there's it's a lot of discomfort so just know when you're younger you can tolerate that a lot better but as you age it will not be kind to you so my my vanity reasons for losing weight, those went away a long time ago. Like, oh, I want to look hot. I'm going to lose weight because I want to be a size six. That that went away a long time ago. And, oh, I want to <laughs> roll out of bed in the morning without screaming in pain. All of a sudden became, yeah. I want to get up out of a car drive after two and a half hours and be able to take a step when I get out of the car. And not feel like I'm completely rusted up like the Tin Man and fucking <laughs> Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Yes, I'm not always great graceful when I exit a car after a long drive. So you you start to re- recognize, oh fuck, this is my quality of life. Oh, I don't want to be bedridden. I don't want to be the lady in in the mo- in, in the cart, the the motorized the cart scooter. at at the uh, local grocery store asking somebody for assistance finding the yeast cream. I don't want to be that lady. I want to find it myself. I do. I want to stand up and walk over. I want over. to be able to bend down and pick it up myself. Exactly. Exactly. So so just recognize you're not alone. You have to just rebuild sustainable little habits over time. You're not in a race. This is not a race. This is your life. You don't have to hit a goal by a certain day. And just find people who support you in that journey. Just find people who support you. Um, they're out there. We're here, right? We're here. You could write to Smarttacular, the Smarttacular email that no one has used today. FYI, I checked it again the other day. No one has ever written us at Smarttacular email. Not yet. It could be you. You could be the one. You could be the first one. You could. You could be the first. You could be the inaugural email that we get. And it could say, I... Really, really appreciate your wisdom, Mass Hobo and Jez. You're amazing. You changed my life. I can't even tell you how much I love you so much, so hard that I love you. And if it's negative, it's going in the garbage. We don't even look at it. If it says anything trolly, it just automatically gets deleted. But if it only praises us as we should be, then we're fine with it. You can send that all day long and we'll read it. Neutral comments are a case-by-case basis. Yeah. If If it amuses us, it might stay. But... We are here. We're we're doing everything we've ever promised to deliver, which is to be entertaining background noise. That's it. That's all we committed to. And I feel we nail it every fucking time. God, killing it. Killing it so hard. So you guys, uh, if you have any information you'd like to share, seriously, go ahead and send something to smarttacular at gmail.com. And we'll be happy to either read it or ignore it. Mm-hmm. Maybe one day we'll be able to do a suggestions or comments at smarttacular dot whatever we pick. Yes. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. We should do that. Totally. And for anybody that's out there, I also do a kick live stream most evenings under Jezebel 65 out on kick live streams. They're fun. Every once in a while in a blue moon, Mass Hobo shows up. It's, it's a blue moon. Sometimes, yeah, if I remember to check kick. Yeah. Which is rare. It is a weird platform and there are interesting people there, but you can, you can catch me there. And I do believe at some point Mass Hobo and I are going to do a live one of these because Podbean does allow us to do one live. And you could see behind Mass Hobo the uh, apocalyptic background that he puts up of uh, guys around a campfire with a guitar, but they totally look like they're in military gear and they don't look happy. I'm just going to say that. Even though they have a guitar playing, they're singing a song about the apocalypse. <laughs> and it's not a good apocalypse. I'm sure it is. Yeah, it's something. Everybody died that day. Everybody that we love died that day. That fateful day of Armageddon. It's some song like that, right? <laughs> I don't know what the lyrics are because it's probably in Russian. So, <laughs> Gospodonia. I think that means thank you. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's a Russian 
uh, uh, that was the translation of the Russian apocalyptic song. But that there you go. you'll get to see that if we do our live on Podbean, we'll think about it. If more than one person, if two people email us at smarttacular.com and say we want the live Podbean, we'll do it. Oh, you can't say smarttacular.com because we don't have it. Oh shit! Smarttacular at gmail.com. Smarttacular at gmail.com. That's the thing. Not smarttacular.com, but we need that. Why don't we have that yet? How much? We haven't bought it yet. If it even exists, somebody might already be squatting on the name. God damn it. How dare they? We'll find out after the Fight. after we stop recording. That's fighting words. We're, we're going to go look. So you guys, thank you for joining us again today for another amazing, helpful episode of Smartacular with me, Jez, and that guy over there, Mass Hobo. Thank you for being here, and we hope you'll come join us again. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>